So I'm just chilling, and Kitty has decided my boob is a favorite place to take a nap. Is it comfy? <laughs> She's so goddamn cute. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello! My name is Yashir Reaper and welcome to the stream! I'm just gonna tweet out that we are live. I'm just reading up the stream. I posted that I am live. I just double check that the stream's actually going over here. Change up the details here. We are live. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. I'm working on a drawing based on this scene from the comics, More Than Means the Eye. I wanted to draw my OC and uh, Rodimus. Because if you don't know, my OC, little, little femme here, um, I have a series of fan fictions where I'm writing her into different, well, pretty much my favorite Transformers universes. And more than meets the eye and R R uh, Robots in Disguise of the IDW verse are on that list. So this is kind of her turn as I'm working on this. And yeah, I did like the sketch art and then I started doing some line art while I was waiting for time for the stream to start. So you're kind of jumping in a bit later. I've been actually having a lot of fun working on the fan fictions for this character to the point where I've kind of abandoned other pro projects that I thought I was passionate in and then I'm realizing slowly that I'm not nearly as passionate in as I thought I was. Like uh, I had a webcomic called The Shadows and I've been working on rewriting it because there were some issues. Now I'm slowly realizing that uh, Despite, like, this story being something close and something I actually do want to write. 
doing a webcomic by myself, especially since I don't think I'm that skilled of an artist, and uh, it's just, I've become to I've begun to realize that I do not wish to do this. I'm like, yep, I I can't. Uh, this is something. This is unsustainable for me. And like, I still want to do it, but like at the same time, I'm like, it's gonna be so inconsistent. It's gonna be. So be done whenever I feel like it, and I don't know if that's something I want to do to it. So, like, I'm kind of, kind of on the fence about my webcomic, and I don't really know how to feel about that. Cause a passion project, it was totally something like I really wanted to do, and I got pretty far in it for a while. But then I was like, okay, story things are not adding up. I want to fix this. So I started the fixing process, and then life got busy, and now I'm just kind of like realizing that there's uh, I, I, there's a lot of things I just mentally, capacity-wise, can't do. And I'm like, yep, yep, this is gonna be. Yep, I'm gonna have to say goodbye to one of these things that I'm doing. And I don't want to say goodbye to my fan fictions, because that's something like, I don't know. It helps me a lot more than people would think it would. So I'm like, I could, this is not going to be something I'm abandoned, and I love it. And I get, like, I'm not going to say feedback's everything, but the fact that I get any feedback whatsoever on, like, my fan fictions, even if it's just some kudos, or just knowing some people are reading it, like, my webcomic, it had, like, maybe a few readers. Like, maybe four. Maybe three. So, I'm like, eh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal kind of thing. But, like, uh, it's one of those things where I'm struggling with it. Where I'm just like, I don't want, like, I don't have the energy or the time to do this. Like, I'm busy. I have work. I have jobs. I have two jobs to pay my bills. And I'm like, eh, this is gonna be a pain in my butt. And I'm not even sure if it's something that I really want to be doing like is this really something I want to do so now I'm just like debating with myself a lot where I'm like is this something I really care about and I'm leaning towards the fact that it might not be that big of a priority and it may not be like something that sustainably I can really be doing <laughs> Streaming is something I get a lot out of streaming. As much as I do love like my webcomic and the story and the characters, it's just something where I'm just like I'm not really getting much out of doing this. Like for myself personally, and that's where I'm kind of like, eh. and then just knowing that I have time restraints and realizing that I have choices of where I can spend my mental energy every day and spend my time and lately like time has been something that I realize I don't get a lot of it so I'm like okay when it's actually stuff that I can like actually decide on whether I want to spend time on this I have to use that time I have like the small window of time I usually get in a week because I work two jobs so I work almost every day and then one of my jobs. I have to take the bus, so that means I get there an hour earlier and stuff like that. And then, like, my other... My jobs are kind of on opposite shift things, so... I have to go to bed fairly early, because one of my jobs is in the morning. And it's actually going to be starting earlier soon, so I'm like... Ugh. This is really something I want to spend a lot of my mental energy and all of my free, precious time on. 
And I think I'm coming to the conclusion that, unfortunately, no, it's not. I'd rather spend time working on my fan fictions, doing some fan art, doing these streams, and like having that time where I can just not do anything. Because there are definitely times where I need to recharge and I need to just like listen to music, watch some stupid videos on YouTube, play Pokemon on my DS for a few solid hours. Like, I'm realizing these are things I need and I want to make time for those things. So some things are definitely going to be cut out of my life. And I unfortunately think that my webcomic is going to be one of those things that I'm going to have to cut out. And I really didn't want that to be what happened to this. But I, I need to look after myself. And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, if I wanted to continue the story, I technically can. And I do it in the format that I actually did start it out with. Which was writing it. Like, writing, which is something I think I'm better at, and I feel like I have more time and more mental energy for that kind of stuff. And then, like, I could do kind of, like, comic-y kind of things every once in a while. Do art, and, like, do that kind of stuff for it, but, like, I don't know. It's hard to explain it right now. I'm just slowly realizing that I've been putting way too much on myself. And I'm like, okay, I need to take a step back here and uh, think about things. people, I don't know what I'm doing 98% of the time. That should be enough for all the colors I need. That's a little bit of a ramble about things I'm struggling with right now. Also, like, another thing I'm starting to realize as I'm, like, getting older and stuff is that, like, there are definitely some things where I'm just like, yeah, this is not going to be a thing that happens. Oh, yeah. Just kind of sort of finding some shit in my life now. Like, I just recently decided kind of what I wanted to do for my career. And I plan to go to school for that soon. Like, once COVID shit comes down. Which I think I'm going to apply for, like, my college in the... This spring? Like... Like, this year might be the year I apply, and then I'll start, like, in September. That kind of thing. But, yeah. It's been a lot. Kind of stuff I've been mulling over, and life shit. If you don't know, I'm playing... I went to university for a lot of years, and then I did one semester of a college course. 
and then abandoned it because I went at the worst possible timing I could ever choose to go to college. Like, I went when I was in the middle of a trial. <laughs> I guess my abuser, that was not a good decision. And I eventually had to quit because of that. And I was like, okay, yep, yep. And I did university, and then I got sick. So I'm like, okay, yep, giving up. I'm not doing university. I'm going to do a college course. I picked it out. Now it's just a matter of uh, making sure I have time for all this slag that I keep putting on myself. for I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna take early childhood education so I can like work in daycares and stuff like that because I love kids I love being kids I love uh, it, it's an interesting thing like for a long time I was actually had some triggers that had to do with kids mostly because like a lot of trauma I had to deal with came from an abusive parental figure and like for a long time I was kind of paranoid and like scared of what would happen to people that I left behind in that situation unfortunately and like I went to court for it as I said and justice wasn't really prevailed so uh yeah for a long time I couldn't be around uh, like a lot of kids like screaming crying that kind of stuff now it doesn't bother me at all now I'm just like oh it's okay sweetie what's wrong but like for a while it would like send me into like a not so good flashback and I did not want to be in there around that shit so I was like hey maybe maybe I shouldn't and now I'm just like okay Life has settled back again. I want to do this. So I was like, uh, like originally I was planning to become a teacher. I wanted to teach in Asia, specifically Japan. But then I realized I'm not good for university, and then I dropped out of university entirely, so... Now I'm like, okay. That's like a bluey color. Look at hmm, like a Roddy. Yeah, um, as I said before about this drawing, it's like I read a fan fiction called TF Yangling, a TFP Yangling, and TFA Yangling at the current moment. But it's part of a whole series of what I call tri uh, the Yangling Saga. And uh, the main character is my OC here, Stargazer. And like different AUs and how she adapts to them, how she lives in them, that kind of deal. And this is her in the or the MCI one. She is adopted. In every universe, like, there's kind of a central few characters that are either, like, 
become her adopted caretakers and then eventually I make them all kind of like actually become like her stand-ins for her creators that kind of thing and uh, this is Rodimus and Rodimus is the one to take her in due to backstory stuff that I made up <laughs> I, I realize sometimes these characters will be slightly OOC or like d reasons for certain things will be because of like stuff I have wanted but like hey that's the world of fan fiction welcome This is my OC, she's a little baby. Her name's Stargazer. She's a little baby. And like every AU she becomes like slightly different depending on who like looks after her in the world that she's in. And like this AU, like when she grows up, she's she kinda becomes like a little mix between um Rodimus and like Thunderclash kinda deal where she's like She's a little adventurous. She's got a good heart. She cares about people. And like... It's kind of hyper-energetic, that kind of deal. But it's also just like... She's a darling. And a lot of the universes... Like, I have her being like one of the more forgiving characters. When other characters are like hung up on certain things, she's like willing to forgive more people. Especially like Decepticons and stuff like that. She's a bit more gentle with them. Despite what happened to her in her youth. Like one part that's pretty much canon in every universe. Unless I specifically state otherwise. Is that her both her creators are dead. They died. Her carrier died. Getting her away from Megatron. And like this forms a big part of her personality. As you would obviously think. Because she's like yeah my parents are dead. And this bastard is the reason that they are dead. So, like, in a lot of universes, like, the one being that she can't really get along with is Megatron. Except for in this universe. Like, at first she's just kind of, like, a little... <sighs> what's it called? Like, a little sassy with them. It's kind of like, yeah, welcome. You're an asshole. But, like, in this universe, she's a bit more... She understands more that a lot of things happen and neither side are really that good. So, she's a bit more forgiving. And then eventually she's just like, yeah, this is my... This is my weird uncle. His name is Megatron. He's killed, like, many people, but... If you read more than me, see, you'd understand that, like... Character shit. Like... She actually grows to, like, being like, yeah, he's pretty cool, and, like, we'll defend him when people are like, ah! But, like, at first she's a little sassy. Like... And, like, later on, it becomes her thing, like, when he's acting, like, a bit too, kind of, like, I want to say megatron -y and being, like, scowling and looking like a depressing little blob. She'll, she'll, like, do something, like, when she's younger, she would, like, jump on him and, like, grab his face blade and, like, literally try to force him to smile, that kind of thing, where she's like, Stop smiling! You're being creepy! This is why no one likes you! That kind of thing. And, like, as an adult, she's just, like, sassing him. Like, come on, put on a smile, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why are we burying someone? Jesus, smile! And that kind of stuff, and it's kind of cute. Like, a lot of this I've written for later points. Like, I, I'm... In all of these kind of Youngling Saga things, I make sure to write at least the first six chapters before I start posting. I'm on chapter three of this one. But a lot of it is like, I want to reread a lot of More Than Meets the Eye. I have the big volume things, but I ran, I'm, I've got up to volume, I think, six, seven. Maybe eight. And then I need the rest of them to finish reading the series. And I refuse to buy digital, but the hard copies are hard to find. And when they, you do find them, they're very expensive. So I'm like, Ugh. So, so far I've been relying on wiki things to kind of correct shit. I'm like, I don't know what this part is, but I can guess. <laughs> I can guess. Thank you. 
Yeah, as I said, like, uh, I'll, I'll explain. Like, there's gonna be a G1 one that I'm working on. I'm, like, slowly rewriting it because there's details I want to change. Like, originally I was kind of going with what I knew from not really watching the show, and now I'm, like, I've, I've been watching the show binging it on here, if you know. I'm on, like, se near the end of season two. And, um, I've dis I've formed my own headcanons and things need to change in that fix. So it's like, I'm gonna restart writing this one. So I restarted it, kind of, and, like, I'm, I'm going through the, the show and being like, yep, yep, this is details I want to keep. Like, one of my main thing was, like, a few ships I had to change. Like, the main ship stayed the same, because it was fucking Wheeljack and Ratchet. As far as I'm concerned, that shit is canon. <laughs> and then I was like, I was gonna have, like, Optimus and Alita. And I watched the show. And, uh, your girl's gotta stand Ironhide and Optimus. I am sorry, one scene made me ship it so hard that I'm like, yep, yep, no, this is being included. <laughs> People are like, why do ships affect your storytelling? Because I picked my favorite, one of my favorite ships. Like, even More Than Meets the Eye, I originally had it where it was going to be Rodimus and Ultra Magnus. And then I read a bit more into, like, Lost Light, and I was like, ah, nope, it's gotta be. It's gotta be Thunderclash and Rodimus, so. <laughs> Mostly, like, I switched that because originally I was gonna be like, okay, maybe I'll ship him with no one, he'll just be like a solo one. And, because it started off, I was like, I'll ship, like, Ultra Magnus and him. And then I saw how, like, Minimus and Megatron interact. I was like, fuck! Nope, nope, I've changed my mind. These two have to be together, so I'm like, ah, shit, I gotta change things. People are like, that's weird. I know it's weird. I realize it's kind of funny that, like, I rewrite shit just because I found a ship that I prefer in the show. But that's the way the train rolls on this, especially in my brain. Y'all don't know, I'm always sleepy now. That is like my new personality trait. <laughs> Back when I was younger, I used to be able to run on no sleep. Now I get seven, eight hours of sleep every night and I'm still tired. Welcome. To the chronic tiredness. For some fucking reason, my body has decided we're gonna always feel like we're tired. And I'm like, okay, fine. I guess that's now a thing. I don't know if it comes from any of my disorders that I have, but, like, I don't know. I'm just chronically always tired. And then occasionally I'm like, oh, sweet, energy! And then it's, like, gone, and it's like, oh! Well, that was fast. So by the way, like, I really traced the gun when doing this, because uh, I'm not good with drawing weapons. Like, blades, not that bad, but, like, guns and shit, no, I have no skill drawing guns. Like, even in my webcomic, like, the couple times I've had to draw guns, I draw the, like, simplest guns, like, I'll show you later. Alright, maybe I'll find one. But I draw, like, the simple, like, block small child drawing gun skills like that's that's what I do the only thing is that I had dimensions <laughs> that's about it even then they're bad because <laughs> I have no death perception or no like you know that people can like turn something and like do visual puzzles like be able to turn something to realize how something works yeah I don't have that like I'm not good at that shit so I'm like uh -huh. what what how does this fit and people are like you just, like, isn't that obvious? I'm like, no, it's not. It's really not. I don't know what's going on. I'm just gonna use the same gray I've been using for her. Onto his neck. But yeah. 
One of my favorite things about writing, like, fan fiction, especially, like, this saga series, is that I, I get to dive into all the worlds while still having, like, the basic idea. Like, one thing I've been playing about in a lot of my heads for the AU versions is, like, whether I want them to have a scene where she can, like, go back to where she's originally from and, like, say hello to people that she pretty much was like, yeah, I'm never gonna see these people again, and be like, hi, uh, I, I, hello, <laughs> that kind of thing. I'm, like, debating it all the time. I'm like, eh, do I want to do it? And then I think about it, and I'm like, eh, eh, eh. to the side, okay? Especially when you like me. And fanfic ideas come to you, like... Literally, the last time I was watching Transformers live on stream, a fanfic idea came to me. It was for a human former one, but, like... Just one episode, and I was like, Shit, I have an idea, and I need to do it! So I wrote down the idea, and I'm probably gonna work on it at some point, but, like... <laughs> my brain is wired for fanfiction. Like, I've been writing fanfiction for years. Like, this Youngling series. It started off as just it was gonna be a singular AU one, and it, I started writing it back in, like... Uh, maybe 2014? 2015? Published it in 2016. Abandoned it. Then came back to it a couple times. And now I'm on like my fourth time. Uh, my third time returning to it. And now this is the time I'm taking it very seriously. And like doing monthly updates and all that kind of stuff. You are wondering, why do monthly updates? Like some people can do weekly. Because I need that time to work. On like the chapter. Or on like, I don't want to get... I don't want to get to a point where I'm like, I can't release a thing this month because I don't have it written. That kind of thing, where I get far ahead. I'd rather release on a consistent schedule than, like, try to upload as many as I can at pop in the quickest amount of time. And then realize I can't keep up with that speed. <laughs> That's my viewpoint on it, anyways. Which is also why I have the policy for this fanfiction where I'm like, I need to be able to write six chapters. So I have six months ahead. So I can keep writing and stuff. But yeah, I originally made it like three or four, but then I thought about it and I was like, eh. I'd rather give myself more time than give myself less time. And then like, there are occasionally months where I'm really busy and I really don't have time to write. So I'm like, okay, yeah. Or like, there are times where... I get ideas for later portions, but not like the earlier portions. And yeah, welcome, welcome to my brain. My brain does not work properly, okay, people. I'm sorry. My brain does not function like mortal beings should. It does its own thing, and I'm generally held hostage by it. And the eight years, like I'm doing, like the universe is where this fan fiction so far has been, at least started, is G1. Animated, of course, Transformers Prime, obviously, because that's the main AU one. And then I've started one for G1, Robots at uh, R.I.D., More Than Meets the Eye. Um, then I started one for Rescue Bots. And then I've started one for... One, a couple of them are just, like, AU variants. Like, one is in one part of the storyline, which... I'm holding off, like, uploading that one until I get a certain point in the main, the main AU. Because it's, like, a canon divergent, like, at this one moment, this one thing changed, which in turn changes the whole storyline. Like, the, at this one point, it will diverge, and that's when I'll start releasing this one. It's basically, like, there's a close call for Stargazer, and... In the main storyline, she lives it, but, like, in this different AU thing, it's like, no, no, she she doesn't. And this is what happens because of her dying kind of deal. And then there's one where it's, like, a different beginning idea thing, where, like, as I said, there's, like, a main part of the story where it's just, like, it's the same between the AUs where basically her creators die. Well, I'm writing one where basically everything is the same pretty much as the main AU, but like her creators actually don't die during this. And like from that, that one little difference at the beginning of the story, things change. And I've been slowly working on that one. And that's also going to be one that like gets written probably after. Like it won't be for that divergent point. It'll probably be like after the story's completed that I'll start doing that one. 
So that when I get a bit more time to work on that kind of stuff. And for a lot of it, I think it'll be like. I think it's actually in my best interest to wait. earlier there's a lot of a lot of uh, work that's been going into the series and it's kind of what a lot of my main focus has been on for creative output has been doing this series and just like working on it and then doing my streams and I have a few other fan fictions that I upload try to do, do anyways monthly <laughs> I make no promises on those though make none Like, one of them has definitely been on the upload basis of when I think of stuff for this, I shall update it. And, like, even one of them, one of them was like a rewrite of an old story I did, and I'm behind on it because I lose interest in it. Because I was like, I want to do this. And then I'm like, halfway through, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. I hate that part about myself. Like, I like to see projects through, but occasionally, when it comes to, like, especially my creative projects, if I lose interest. There is no forcing myself into it. Like, I can't force myself to be creative. That is that is one thing I will always state. And, like, when I do, I hate the end product. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I guess this is just going to be a thing that I upload when I feel like it. Yay. And that's why I'm so, like, hyper fixating on this one project. Because I know right now I feel motivated to do it. Also, I gotta be RB. I gotta go pee. This is what happens when you drink tons of water every day. But do it. Drink water. And I'm back. I am back. Yeah. Also, I plan on watching Earthrise today. The new for the War Cybertron trilogy on Netflix. Which is the entire reason I got Netflix. And then I keep forgetting I have Netflix. Or I don't have time and I don't watch the shows I want to watch. So I'm going to marathon that today. Because I've been avoiding the Transformers tags. And... I want to get back into watch looking at the Transformers tags. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I gotta watch it. Because if I don't watch it, then it will be ruined! Like, I've already had a few things, because I was, like, looking up a ship, and then I f totally forgot Earth was going out, and then I saw, like, it in the line. I was like, no! <laughs> no, I did not want this. No, please, no. And I was like, well, fuck. Yeah, I guess. I guess this is, a. Uh... It is too late for me now. So, like, I've had a one scene spoiled. And I'm not really that surprised that this scene happened, because, like, 
I've been in the fandom long enough to know when, like, certain tropey things are probably gonna happen, so I'm like, eh, eh, I kinda, I kinda almost expected this, but at the same time, I kinda wish it wasn't spoiled for me, and that I could have seen it live. I was actually talking about it at work today, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna watch this thing, but one of the things got spoiled, and everyone's going on about the gayness, and <laughs> they're just like, what are you watching? I'm like, Transformers, and they're like, what? I, I will never understand this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, most people outside the fandom wouldn't, I'm sorry. Color. Also, look at her, my sweet little bean. She is adorable. Here's a fun fact, actually. I designed this character back in, like, 2014, and her whole thing was that she was a little tiny Praxian. And, uh, that, uh, her colors were going to be cream and a light purple. And I eventually decided on, like, this shade of kind of a creamy color. And then, like, uh, the light purple that she has. And one thing that was also, like, really designed early on in her character was who her creators were going to be. Like, her real creators, despite any sort of adoption things that get played in later. These are her creators in, like, every continuity as far as I'm concerned. Like, they'll... I don't know. I have, like, a lot of found family in, like, her stories. But I also don't try to play down the fact that, like, these are her parents. These were originally her parents. And despite anything... Like, no matter who takes her in and who like, is looking after her and all that stuff. Like, they are still her parents. They're just gone and dead. That kind of thing. That's one of those things that I, I demanded I was going to stick to. And I've stuck to it fairly well. Where I think I'm betraying that fact where it's like, yep. Yeah. These are definitely her creators. Like, she will call them her create her creators. Like, these are the people that she adores and sees as family. But I'm not going to play down the fact that these these other people are her original parents. Like, these people loved her. They adored her. They wanted to be in her life. Just life circumstances took them away. And I do not want to downplay the fact that, despite everything, these people are still close to her. That's one thing I've kind of stuck to. <laughs> just trying to make that pretty clear in my story where I'm just like, yeah, all these things can be true at once. Like, these people, she can call these people like her earthly turns for parents, but like, or alien turns for parents, but like, these two people are still very important to her life and always will be, no matter what. One thing I love about, like, making Rodimus her carrier in this universe is, like, it opened up a lot of possibilities for me in, like, story time kind of deals. Like, one thing I wanted to do was make sure that, like, in every universe, like, when she grows up, she's slightly different in every version because, well, slightly different things happened. And, like, different people raised her. So, of course, her personality is going to be slightly different. Like, a lot of core things stay, but, like, other things are definitely, I understand that influence and, like, where you are, who's raising you, definitely affects your personality. And that's, like, one of those things I try to get across is that, like, each version of her is similar, but, like, not exactly the same. Over. 
this pen. trying to, a lot, of, a lot of things went into this one. One of my favorite things is like rating how like certain people react to certain situations and like one of the cute parts I think for like Roddy being her care, her caretaker would be like, you know how Rodimus is, he's like charismatic a bit, kind of goofy, that kind of thing. So how would knowing that that kind of person who's slightly irresponsible, like raising a youngling would be? One of my favorite, like, details that I'm adding to, like, Stargazer. And a lot of the other universes, she, like, when people say that, like, don't do this, she usually kind of obeys. And, like, occasionally, if a high-stakes situation or certain situations, she will disobey. But for the most part, she like, kind of listens to her guardians. In this universe, I have her, like, this and another one. I have it where, like, this and more than meets the uh, no, uh, our, Robots in Disguise, the RDW one. I have it, like, where she will just disappear. Like, one of her things in this one is that she doesn't want to bother people, and she knows, like, Rodimus is busy a lot of the time. So, like, her, one of her big things is that, like, okay, I feel safe on this ship. Everyone on this ship loves me. My caretaker is the captain, so I should feel fine. And she will just, like, wander around the ship. <laughs> And people are like, please don't do that. Like, I'm sorry. This ship is not safe entirely for a youngling to be wandering around. And she's just like, it's fine. And they're like, it's really not. <laughs> like, that's actually how, how I have her meet Megatron. She's sn snuck off on her own. She's looking at a certain window port that she likes that has a good view. And she's humming. And Megatron sees so it. like, what the fuck? There's a youngling here. I didn't even know that. Because I have it, like, I have ideas. And anyways, like, she's like, oh, hi. Yeah, I'm watching the window thing. And, like, she kind of talks to him. And then kind of figures out, like, oh, no one's told you about me, huh? Why am I not surprised? But, like, she's a bit more accepting of Megatron at this point. Like, she still is wary of him, but not nearly as bad as she would be in the other universes. And she's just like, yeah, I was looking at this window, and he's like, well, I don't think a youngling should be here out by themselves, so I'm gonna take you back. Let's get you back. And she's like, you know, someone's gonna probably hate you for this. And he's like, uh, well, I think it's best that you not be wandering around this ship alone. And he's like, she's like, your funeral. That kind of deal. She's like, yeah, a certain crew see you with me. They're gonna probably murder you. Are you okay with that? And he's like, well, I don't think a young lady should be wandering around the ship alone. And she's like, okay, fine. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> I am warning you. Some of the bots on this ship are crazy. And, like, at the beginning, she has, like, really close relationships. She loves Rung. And, like, is one of the few people in, like, the beginning that actually, like, remembers his name at all times. She's like, oh, thank you, Rung. Like, other people occasionally mess it up, and she's just like, Thank you, Rung! And, like, when people get it wrong, she she's, like, one of the first to correct them. Like, that's Rung. <laughs> like, why are you guys so bad with this? I, how, how do you guys always forget this guy's name? <laughs> that's just something I thought was kind of cute for her. And, like, she likes Rung. She likes to hang out in his office, see his treats. She's just really adorable, okay? Like, this universe, she, like, adores, like, one of the f first people she meets is, uh, Tailgate. So she, like, adores Tailgate. And it's like, yep, this is my dude. Like, at first, like, because Rodimus is, like, captain and stuff, like, he can't be around her all the time. So he sets up, like, a thing of babysitters. And, like, I was, like, trying to come up with the people on the last side I thought that would be, like, I will deal with a youngling. And I came up with like, kind of a funny list. <laughs> Rewind and Chrome Dome. I could see them. Swerve. Um, Rung, obviously. Ratchet. 
the drift, but he's usually a command deck too. Um, and then later on, like Thunderclash and some other characters, that kind of deal, like Nautica when she gets on board, that kind of stuff. And then of course Tailgate and Cyclonus are like early caretakers for her, like people that Rodimus is like, okay, I have to do command shit stuff. You watch her. And like, you know how Tailgate later on gets like the superpower to be super strong. I had like a thing where like later on when she starts running away, he's like literally picking up this fen that's like bigger, like a little bit bigger than him and like carrying him, <laughs> her over his head like, you little lady, you listen to me. <laughs> I thought I'd be adorable. And now that image will not leave my mind and I'm like, yes, yes, this is, this is going to be a thing now. And she, like, you know how Cyclonus teats, uh, Tailgate, like, old Cybertronian. I have a feeling, like, Star would be the kind of person that'd be very interested in that and be like, Can you teach me too? I don't know. It's one of those things where I, I'm slowly working on bits and pieces of it. I'm in the early stages now. Like, I've come up with the reason why I wanted it to be Rodimus. Like, I knew it was gonna be Rodimus from the first, but I, I always, like, come up with a certain reason why. Like, in uh, TFA, it becomes, uh, Prowl is able to calm down Stargazer, so of course Prowl becomes her caretaker. That kind of deal. And then, like, other universes, like, the reason in TFP why Ratchet it becomes her caretaker is because Ratchet's always had a thing for younglings. He knew Jazz, like, her, knew her creators, and is basically the one with the time to kind of watch her. And then over time, it becomes, like, different stuff. But, like, yeah. Like, if you are anywhere intrigued by any of this shit I'm talking about, go check it them out. <laughs> you can read them all on my AO3 account on Yashiro Reaper. I know it's Yashiro Reaper all across the web. I don't hide my fanfictions. I'm rather proud of them. <laughs> but, yeah. I have TFP fanfic. That's up to, like, 30 chapters, I think. It's getting up there. And then there is the TFA one, which is, I believe, three chapters or two chapters in. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's either three chapters in or two. Also, one thing I've been doing the last, like, little bit with, like, my fanfiction stuff is that, like, uh, I've been slowly transferring a lot of, like, handwritten stuff that I've written on p sheets of paper and in binders and things like that over the years, and I've been slowly compiling them just onto digital. And I've also been using, um, my Google Drive to, like, store them. Like, every time I update something, I put it onto my Google Drive so then I like when I'm out and about I can read stuff and get ideas and cross-reference things while I'm writing out and about because like a lot of times when I'm out and about doing stuff whether I'm running errands or I'm at work and uh, I'm on break I come up with things like one thing I actually learned recently was that uh, when I'm on break I don't have to clock out because I'm technically the manager on duty and they could call me up at any point so I don't have to clock out for my lunch breaks which means I get more money 
I was pretty excited about that. I was like, oh, I've been doing this wrong the entire time. The manager's like, yeah, like, if no one else with a manager key is here, you can't be technically clocked out. And I'm like, thank you. That would have been nice to know. Oh, well. But now I know it. And that's very handy. Also, like, people who've been watching my streams for a while have noticed, like, you may have noticed that there's been a lack of My Hero Academia art. I've kind of fallen out of the fandom a lot. Like, I just found the fandom kind of toxic -y. Some things happened I didn't really agree with. And then I was just like, as much as I do love the show, and I still do, and I plan on watching, like, the next season when it comes out. It, it was one of those things where I became, like, very hyper-fixated on it for a while, and then, like, just slowly lost interest. Like, I still like it, but it's like not my main thing anymore and I don't really want to draw fan art for it and then I just became re-enamored with one of my main uh, hyper fixations so I was like okay yeah I guess this is just gonna be abandoned is anyone who was like here when I used to do my hair academia art yeah I'm sorry that I'm not, no longer drawing the stuff you originally came here for people are like are you gonna stick with like Transformers? Probably. Transformers has been... I got really into Transformers, and like... If you don't know, I have a tattoo. Uh, the session has been gone long! Like, I started... I got into Transformers really back in high school. Like, grade 9, 10. Was when I first watched... Uh, uh fuck, what did I watch? I watched uh, Prime. Transformers Prime on TV and I fell in love with it and then I got really into everything and watched like animated and I watched all the live action movies and watched the original mo original G1 movie. I didn't really see the show. I saw like the first three episodes I think and that was like most of my exposure to the G1 show even though I've had the entire show to watch. <laughs> but like yeah. And then I got really into the comic books especially my last year of high school and first years of university. Like, it's why I have so many of the big volumes, because I used to buy every time the new big volume came out, I bought it. And then I got ill, and had a lot of medicine issues, and had a lot of issues, and kind of fell out of Transformers for a bit. And then I realized I was out of all the issues I wanted. Uh, now it's been years since it ended, and I'm trying to collect all the issues I missed, and I hate it. And people are wondering, like, well, you could always get the digital copy. I will always stand by... It's a Stanley quote from a documentary I used in a couple essays because I wrote essays about comic books. Because <laughs> I'm that kind of nerd. I went to university and I wrote three, two academic papers on comic books and one high school level academic paper. You can't make me abandon this. I will die on this pedestal. But uh, I always stand by the Stanley quote. Like, there's nothing better than holding the book and flipping those pages. That's why I never got into like digital comic books. Like, I got a couple of comic books digitally. And I hated it. I realized I really don't like reading comics digitally. Like, I don't mind it when it's a webcomic and that's the only way. But if I can have a comic book, I would prefer the comic book. Like, audiobook, like, even, I don't know. I've always been prefer a physical copies. When there are physical copies available, I will do that medium. But, like, I prefer, when I'm reading a comic book, I want to hold it. <laughs> I want to hold that comic book. So... I don't want to read this series unless I can find the book, the, like, actual comics, so I'm like, eh, gonna have to spend lots of money on this, but it's a worthy investment.
I think it is looking pretty good. I think I've done a good job here, folks. There. I guess I'll have a few lines to make here. Two shading details. I need to finish. I think we did pretty good here, folks. I think we did. I think we did good. Also, by the way, this is the title of Carrier Fury because you don't fuck with Rodimus's baby. <laughs> you fuck with Rodimus's baby, you're about to die. <laughs> So, to draw. So, we'll pick up something else. We'll see. Oh, TF stuff was a half way. Still haven't done this one yet. I keep forgetting. I don't really want to do that now. If you, if you haven't noticed, a lot of my things have to do with my mood. Do I wish to draw this right now? No, then it shall not be drawn. A lot of things aren't like halfway done. Like some things I'm like doing just to learn how to draw these characters. Ah. I don't nearly do as much sketching as I should probably do. <laughs> My cat just snazzled. Snazzled. Sniff snarf snarfled it. I draw some of my webcomic shit. I love these kind of meme format things where it's just like poses. This one's one of my favorite ones. I'm just like, yeah, this is this is perfect. <laughs> this is 
This is an easy thing for me and I like it. <laughs> like being able to draw some of these characters. Is <laughs> these are my webcomic characters if you don't know. A webcomic that I'm debating giving up on. <laughs> like I definitely still want to keep drawing these characters and keep doing stuff with them. I just... Webcomics are hard. And, like, whenever I can't upload on, like, a somewhat consistent scale, I, I realize I'm like, yep, nope, and I can't do this anymore. I know I'm the one setting these expectations on myself, but, like... I'd also like it, like, when I work on this stuff, as much as it's, like, for myself and for a creative passion, like, if you can't upload stuff on a consistent scale, I know no one's gonna read it. And, like, uh, like no one's going to read it and that kind of stuff. So I'm like, uh, do I really want to keep creating this thing when I know no one's going to be reading it? I'm going to upload it at an inconsistent scale. And it may not even be up to the quality I want it to be. my dude Seth. He's a little asshole. As I as I like work on the final line after these guys I'll describe them. This is Seth. He's the older brother, the hothead, the kind of jerk. But he's also very kind and like he cares about people generally. Also slight soon today. Moving on. We got my boy Danny. Also, if you're wondering, like, yeah, they all have, like, slightly different signatures. Danny's kind of the smart, slightly sarcastic one. <laughs> like, he's not afraid to call his brothers out on their bullshit and be like, that's one of the few slightly smart ones here. I wish to state how much you guys are being bullshit. My boy Danny. He's adorable. He's also that kind of like obsessive, like, I, I think I figured something out, guys. And like, <laughs> hasn't slept for 40 days. Blood, <laughs> his blood is now caffeine, that kind of guy. He 
He's kind of like stereotypical nerd kind of guy. But he will still like tell you your shit is bullshit. Like it's like what the fuck, you dick. Also, yes, I give him Harry Potter glasses. <laughs> he also has like curly mop of hair. I kind of decided when I was doing the siblings, I kind of paired them off into twos for like a lot of things. Like two of them have ridiculously curly hair. We got my boy Danny here, who's got a mop of head, mop of hair. And then our boy Maxie, who's got like curly blonde locks. Then we got the two boys with more straighter hair. Two of them have jet black hair, two of them have like blondy hair. One is more of a sandy blonde, but still. Kind of paired them off. Also, I don't know, I don't know when I like added this hair flick to him. But like when I was design slowly like changing some design details over the years, it I I like started with the hair flick to like signify that he had curly hair, and then just never let it go. Like even when I was just like actually start drawing him with like kind of curly locks, I was just like, you know, this is staying in. I don't know why, but it's staying in. Boy Danny is a cutie. Like he's the one like his brothers are doing something stupid and he's like I'm gonna sit back and judge all of you harshly. Don't think you're getting off lightly because you're my siblings. I will call you the idiots that you are. very much the what the fuck are you guys doing there. then here's our girl Alice there's our girl Alice Alice is very much the word of reason but also is a bit of a fucking hothead like, when people are being stupid, she will yell at them and be like, Why are you like this? That kind of deal. Well, Danny's very much like, Oh my god, these people are idiots. She's like, screaming it in their faces. Like, why are all of you such idiots? She's like, kind of the mom group. where She's just like... I'm kind of in charge. I'm apparently the one who's responsible. But she also, like, she's the one that'll be like, if you guys don't fucking do as I fucking say, I will fucking de destroy you. Like that kind of friend. She's, she's a fun case. Right, I, I, I've kind of 
grown to really like writing her. <laughs> like originally I was just gonna make her like a stock quiet, like little nerdy type who wanted to help people. Then I was like, you know what? No, I don't wanna I wanna do that stereotype. And then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make her like fucking done with everybody's shit like twenty eight years ago. <laughs> and she's only fifteen. <laughs> she's already done with everyone's shit. She's like What are you doing? One that's like slowly losing her mind. She's like, ah, if you guys, if you guys can't, I swear to God, if you guys can't keep yourselves from almost killing each other for five minutes. <laughs> She's about this close to being done with everyone's shit. I'm being like, you know what? Yep. She's also, like, the one that's kind of has medical training. So, like, as, since we're just on the topic of Transformers, picture, like, a kind of ratchet character that's just like, I'm done with all your shit. <laughs> like, she is, like, an 80-year-old grumpy man stuck in the body of a 15-year-old girl kind of deal. <laughs> She's, like, the heiress to a big pharmaceutical company. She's dealing with shit all the time, and then her friends are, like, doing stupid shit, and she's like, ah, I have to waste my brain cells to save them. Just <laughs> slowly, slowly being like, you know what, all of you, you're in trouble, I'm done with your shit, and I'm done with your shit. She's always, like, a minute away from snapping at everyone and be like, what have you done? <laughs> What did you do? Alright, I was minding my own business. Bullshit! I was! And what exactly happened when you were minding your business? characters and like slowly evolving them from like the general archetypes they were when I first started like creating them so I recognize like when I first started writing these these were very much shallow characters over time they've grown and become like kind of like their own characterish kind of deals like they still fall into like general archetypes some of my favorite ones but like a lot of details have changed over time where they've also become their own thing also, yeah, she has, like, the long sides, kind of, gumi megpod hair. She is very much tired of everyone's shit, and just wants to lay down. And we got my boy Silver! <laughs> my wolf boy. And yes, I did name this boy Silver Von Wolf. Come at me. His thing is that, like, he's kind of like the dopey kind of. He's the guy that helped you move. Like, anytime you needed to. But, like, he, he's got some issues. Like, he's very much shoot first, ask questions later. Like, You've done something that looks mildly inappropriate. Like, you know those scenes in, like, anime where it's like, It's all a misunderstanding. Yeah, he'd be the one that's, like, dishing out the fucking punishment. Like, what the fuck have you done? And people are like, Well, we can explain. And, like, even the person that, like, supposedly done wrong could It's like, like, there's an explanation for this. And he's like, nope. I shall defend your honor. <laughs> he's that guy. But he's also, like... He's his own guy. He's also, like, one of those kind of doofuses that, like, everyone's like, yeah, we all know you like this character. And he's like, what are you talking about? I don't like them. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, it's so fucking obvious! Yeah, he can turn into a wolf. And this is kind of, like, his half-transform phase where he's, like, not entirely wolf. Yeah, he has like three stages of the transformation. The one where I call he's full wolf kind of thing. 
Like, just a giant, a slightly bigger version of a normal wolf. Then he's got the one where he's, like, almost a furry kind of level. And then he's got the one where he's just got the ears, the tail, like, the, the nose, the teeth, that kind of thing. Well, the teeth are always kind of sharp, they're just not as pronounced in his normal form. Like, he's one of those characters that, like, in anime you see them and they got, like, the, the fang. Yeah, he's one of them. Yeah, at this stage, like, he... He's got most of his stuff, like, all settled. He gets this, like, kind of goatee kind of thing. those like almost low level dorks but he also like if he doesn't like you or like think something thinks you're suspicious it takes him like for fucking ever to like ever trust people if he doesn't like you he makes it very known that he does not like you I think he looks pretty good there. There he is. There's my boy. My very angry boy who's like, ah! How dare you! Then we got Lee, the... Ah, everyone. She's kind of like a bit of an airhead, but also like... Knows when to kind of like... She can be a bit of an airhead, but she's like very responsible kind of thing. She's like the one sitting next to Alice. Like, Alice, please. Like... I understand your frustration with all of them, but please, please, you need to calm down. She's the, oh, what have you done? Not the, what the fuck have you done? Just, oh, what'd you do? What'd you do?
My girl. Leah is kind of cute. And then we got our boy Leon. Leon is the... I want to say the more true airhead. Like, he has a good heart. He wants to make everything good. But he also, like, doesn't know how to deal with things and can get, like, surprisingly anxious very quick. But he also, like, knows when he has to take responsibility for things. He can kind of be, like, a bit naive to a lot of things. Like, a lot of things go over his head. Which is why I think it's funny that I paired him with like my most like obnoxious fucking female lead. I'm like, yeah, let's go. We'll set you up with the girl who's crazy. Well, technically, uh, Lee is non-binary, but she leans toward dressing female because she knows she'll get what she wants that way. But she doesn't want to get that kind of stuff. She dresses kind of tomboy. -y. But like, her thing is very much like she's. I don't want to say non-binary entirely. More like a gender kind of deal. This is my boy Lee, uh, Leon. He is technically the eldest, like older than Seth, but he's blind. And like, because he's blind, a lot of things have been pushed onto Seth because of ableism. Shit. <laughs> Like, he has his own insecurities and shit. He has kind of a sandier blonde hair, while Maxie has, like, the nice pure blonde locks. Which, in stuff, like, yeah. He also wears hoodies a lot. He's a very anxious boy. Very anxious. He's also like almost like too like good natured. He likes to help people, but like he can be a bit too good natured sometimes. There we get down to my boy Maxi. He's my trans boy. Born a female. Identifies as a male. He's a little cutie. He's got like the big eyes. The, like, cute small features, like, he, he's adorable. Like, I originally just made him, like, a really cute looking boy. And then I was, like, working around on this character, and I'm like, I kind of want to add a bit more depth than him just being an ad adorable little man. <laughs> and I was like... And then I was thinking about it, I'm like... You know what? I think I figured out the thing. And I was like, the reason he looks so adorably cute, like li like a little, like cutesy little Sugoi boy, <laughs> is because he was born a female. He identifies as a male. But he's kind of like the, I want to say almost, like in a lot of ways he conforms, but he likes like cute things and like is very like bright little sunshine ball. Like very much a little little ray of sunshine. He's got his little blonde, like flowy locks. Like he's got incredibly curly hair. 
like his hair is this like entirely curls upon curls of hair. He's adorable. And his name is Maxi in this. Maxi. His original birth name being Maxine. He didn't want to like get rid of his full name and like one of his nicknames had actually been like when he was very small with his brothers was Max Maxi. So just became like a thing. Where like they're like, oh yeah, Maxi. And then he, he was like, well, that's going to be my name. <laughs> and I think it suits him. A lot of the influence for like having them name like kind of slightly normal things, but not really, was... If you ever read The Outsiders? And like, there's... One of the characters is named Soda Pop. Yeah. That's kind of where I got the idea. His name is Maxi. He's an adorable little bean. He's an adorable little bean. He's a little sweetheart. He's also very, very graceful. There's actually a surprising amount of influences for this, like, series of mine. Like, one well, of the first influences being uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then, like, some other ones have jumped in, like, X-Men. Some, like, early, like, just random comic book influences. Soul Eater, surprisingly. <laughs> like, there's a lot of influences that went into, like, this, this one. I don't know or if you don't know what's like really on my tattoo on my shoulder I'm non-binary so that's why a lot of my characters are like not really straight like my main lead Amy she is pan Maxi here is trans and pan I've got uh, Tally who is um, a gender like Amy leads more towards me, where she's she female presents, does a lot of female things. Well, except female pronouns, but is also like a they them. Like I don't fucking care, <laughs> kind of deal. Like I like it when people use they them pronouns for me. I don't expect it because I know I look female and I present female. I like boy things. I wear boy clothing occasionally, <laughs> mostly because they have pockets. <laughs> but like, I still understand most of the world will perceive me as a female, and that doesn't really bother me. Like, it's nice and it's appreciated when people use they, that pronouns, but, like, I don't fucking expect them at all. I'm like, yeah, I don't expect anyone to use these pronouns at all. That's why, that's why my mother had, like, I came out as non-binary way long ago. And, like, my sister came out as trans, like, a few years ago. And, like, for my family, it's been hard because, like... With my family, when it came to me, I never asked them to change pronouns, because I, I don't care. I, I couldn't be bothered to care. It'd be cool if they used they them pronouns, but I don't care. And I just, I generally understand that, like, pronoun changes. Like, even I get my sister's pronouns wrong, like, occasionally. Or, like, when I do... One thing I always do, which I, I, I do it mostly because that's the easiest way my brain remembers, is that when, it, when I talk about her in the past tense, especially before her transition, I use the pronouns that she went by then, which was he, he, him, and that kind of thing. Or I refer to her occasionally as my brother, because that's kind of more like my used to thing. <laughs> and I understand, like, to me it's not that big of a deal, because like, as I said, I don't really care about pronouns. I think that's why, like, in a weird way, I'm kind of, like, a bit troubled with stuff like this, because I look at my sister, and I'm like, 
She's like, I want to use like these kind of things, and I'm like, well, take this as a tip from someone who presents as a female gender. Yeah, you don't want to have to pay for this stuff. Like my sister for a while, she was buying like the female shaving stuff, and I was like, don't. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, number one, they cost way more because of pink tax, and she's like, okay, and I'm like, number two, they don't even work that good. <laughs> she's like, okay, <laughs> but I want them just because like it makes me feel better, and I was like, okay. But, <laughs> you don't know how many girls actually use male shaving products, because female shaving products kind of suck, and are really expensive. That's one of those things where I'm just like, yeah, sorry. I don't know, I come from the side where I just don't care. So, like, certain things she'll be like, well, it matters to me, and I'm like, well, I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't understand why this kind of stuff matters. Because to me, it doesn't at all. Like, when my mom, I don't know, used to be like, why are you wearing men's clothing? And I'm like, because they have pockets. Because <laughs> they have pockets, mother. That is entirely the reason. Like, in summer, I wear 98% men's, like, basketball shorts. You know why? Pockets. You know how many cl women's clothes have pockets? Almost none of them. You know how many of them suck? All of them. Like, I have one pair of tights that I adore right now, that I wear to work, actually, to my other job, that are cargo-style tights. I love tights. I, I wear tights all the time. It is kind of my thing. I've worn tights for years. But, like, 98% of them don't have any sort of pockets, and I hate that. I don't know. I'm in that weird place where I'm like, I want to support my sister the best I can. I love her to bits. But like, certain things I'm just like, I don't understand why this matters. <laughs> maybe it's because I'm non-binary, maybe it's because I just generally don't give a shit about a lot of things. <laughs> Cause there are a lot of times where I've like given up giving a shit on things. Like, I'm like, well I could have a hard opinion or I could just enjoy life and not really care. That's a lot of my life. It's just, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I understand if you care, but, like, for me, not really. It's not that big of a deal. There are many other things I could be more putting my time and energy to than being upset over stupid things like people saying the wrong gender. Okay? I'm sorry. That's just, that's, that's my opinion on myself. I don't care. The other things I don't like is when people use the, like, Missy. Or, like, really refer to me like a, like a young, innocent... I'm like, <laughs> get away! Like, one of the things I hate, but I also slightly accept a bit more now, is, like, a lot of people see me as way younger than I am. And that bothers me. <laughs> I'm like, no, I am not this old. And they're like, like, I remember one coworker said it, 16. And I was like, nope, nope, hell to the nope. Because I know when a lot of people view me, like, I get ID'd a lot. And I definitely get, like, occasionally I'll get looks from people that are like, you're not this age. Especially when I was younger. And also back when I used to, like... Okay, let me explain. I have no sense of fashion. I have a bit of one now, but, like, for years, none. No sense of fashion. None whatsoever. What I wore was graphic t-shirts, tights, hoodies. Yeah, I looked very mature. <laughs> now I've kind of developed style. But, like, I still... People still give me looks. <laughs> but they're like, they're looking at me like, there's no way this person's old enough to be here. And I'm like, yes, I am, bitch. Although I also use that to my advantage because I know a lot of people think I'm younger than I am. So like when I fuck up or like uh, when people are about to do something like be kind of dickish, I pull off the look of, I'm very young and innocent and I don't know better and it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I understand. I probably shouldn't do that. I am 24, but I occasionally do it to get out of situations. I'm like, do 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 do. I don't longer like this. People are giving me luck. I'm gonna pretend I'm way younger than I am and people will leave me the fuck alone. <gasps> 
and it is great because it works because it's easily believable like I don't know what it is but nowadays like kids like especially kids like high school age they look way older than they really should it weirds me out because I'm like ugh I'm pretty sure when I was in high school you could immediately tell I was in high school no matter what I was doing or what I wore like it wasn't like where I'm having to look at people and I'm like oh yeah you're in like university and they're like no I'm in high school I'm like the fuck you're in high school <gasps> get the fuck out of here get the fuck out of here you're not in high school and they're like yeah I am and I'm like what the fuck happened to high schoolers like what the fuck happened to high schoolers when they all start start looking like they're in their early 20s <laughs> Or at the very least, look like they're 19. What the fuck? I'm assuming stress, but damn. Kids, why why y'all looking so old? But like, this is a lot of fun. Okay, now on to my girl, Tally. She's the crazy one. I think I love her to death. But, like, this, this bitch is crazy. <laughs> She's the very much, the very definition of shoot first, ask questions later type. The kind of reckless abandon. She also is slightly, like, sadistic. <laughs> like, she really likes teasing people. She's kind of a little shit. She's here for the chaos. And she knows it. He very much knows she's here for the chaos. <laughs> and it's like, yes, let's go. Like, some men just want to watch the world burn. That's her. <laughs> she wants to watch the world burn. <laughs> kind of. She's very much that kind of person that, like, if she has no, like, emotional attachment to you, like, if you're not her friend or thing, she will fucking destroy you. Even then, her friends are kind of, like, on a certain level. But, like, she cares about the people she cares about. Everyone else can go fuck themselves. She's like, yeah, I don't care about you. I'm here for my peoples. And only my peoples. If you fuck with my peoples, I will end you. <laughs> and she's also kind of, like... I don't want to... I guess it would be kind of manipulative. Like, she knows how to play a room. <laughs> like how I said, like, when I get in trouble or, like, when I do something stupid, I kind of play, like, younger than I am to get away with shit. Yeah, she's the one that's, like... Hmm, I want to get into this place. Alright, alright, what do I have to do? Do I have to play young? Do I have to be seductive? Do I have to use my body? I will do whatever I want to get to the ends of my means. And it's like, ugh. <laughs> she's a lot of fun to write, but like, she's an interesting character. And I paired her up with this sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, Maxie's a cutesy little girl. Cutesy, cutesy boy, I mean. Yeah. Brain! And then Amy's been done with everyone's shit since the day when she was born, but she's also kind of like the dumbass. <laughs> the, what? Why did you? Why'd you do this? I was really thinking. <laughs> I, I thought it'd be fine. Did you just literally try attack the government and leave a sign saying you did this? Kind of. Ugh, I thought I could handle it. You can't handle it. <laughs> and I love them. So these are the main cast, mostly. You're missing like. I've got most of the boys. Do I have like, everyone here? Yeah, I've got all the boys. I've got all the girls. Yeah. Seth, Leon, Danny, Maxie, and then I got Amy, Tally, Lee, and Alice, and then my boy Silver. <laughs> my boy! <laughs> He's like, ah! I think everyone's looking pretty swell. And it's like almost time for the stream to end, guys. Holy shit. It's been a while. It's been a long time since I found you and I did a lot of line art because that's what I do. Moon Project fucking done. <laughs> oh yeah, this one's pretty good. This is like their couple dynamic kind of things, like boiled down to their essence. These are the two that are like, what the fuck, you're stupid. Or like yelling at each other. Like these two are the ones that are always fighting. Like these these two. These two always fighting. These two are kind of like the loving, adoring kind of thing. Don't piss them off, they will end you. 
These are the cutesy. Oh my god, let's take pictures together. Let's do all this thing. And she's like, oh my god, he's so cute. She's like, he's like, oh my god, she is so cute. They're, they're adorable. And this is, I am here to embarrass you and to make you uncomfortable because I enjoy seeing that expression. And he's like, uh, I love you. You're kind of nice, but uh. <laughs> my poor boy. I made interesting couple dynamics. And I went, it was like, oh, they got a straight. I don't care. And like with Danny, he's kind of, things happen later on that I am not really entirely set on. But like some things happen later on that kind of change these couple dynamics. A lot of the characters change as they age. Like it's not until like way later in the series that Maxi starts to actually look more male presenting because it takes a while. Because of certain circumstances in the story, he can't really go on hormone therapy. So he always has, like, the kind of higher-pitched voice that he has to, like, physically lower. Later on in life, he, he, he gets a... He, he's able to grow a single goatee. Not a mustache, it's a goatee. And he's, like, proud of it. He's like, look at this. I have made this. <laughs> certain details. As I said, it's a lot of fun writing these characters. They're cute. They have a lot of dynamic-y things. Like, this is, like... I'll work on that later. Then like, yeah. It's a lot of fun to be working on this shit. I've been working on this shit for a long, long time. Gonna work, gonna work. Gonna whip and watch me night night. <laughs> I know, I'm cringe. I'm sorry. Welcome to my world. Like, Where is it? I just passed it. I know I just passed it. There he is. There's my little boy. Because I thought it would be cute to draw him in a sailor uniform. <laughs> like, think of Momiji. That kind of cutesy boy. I kind of feel like May, I mean, May other like gays. Like, uh, Amy's uncles that are a big part of, like, kind of the group of just watching these fucking kids. <laughs> Her gay uncles. She's got one uncle who's a big, fat, gay man <laughs> who turns into a bear. Because I have no sense of humor. <laughs> I literally made a bear a bear. <laughs> and then, like, her uncle's kind of, like, the more... Rela her other uncle's, like, the more relaxed kind of gay dude. <laughs> Like, hello, yes. Oh yeah, here's another project I've been working on. It's just like a short little... Like, six panel short comic sketch things. But I'm not entirely sure if I'm ever going to release it, so... That's, that's kind of a working project thing that I just keep looking at. Yeah, I forgot this. <laughs> Kitty betrayed me. I can't bit my lip one day. I did a qu quick doodle of it, and then I made it a digital drawing eventually. Because that's what I do, folks. Welcome to my life. I spend 98% of my time drawing. I have some TMT pictures. That's a really old drawing. That's an older drawing, too. That I mostly just drew to use as a thumbnail for one of my, for my fanfic. Another one I did. That was a thumbnail for fanfic. That one I drew myself. That one. It was just me getting a concept for a thumbnail for a fanfic I thought about writing. That's another one that I drew def definitely by myself. Same with that one. <laughs> you can tell the ones I drew off my own ideas. They are bad. <laughs> These ones, this one was totally just for I wanted a cover. And I wanted it to look a certain way. And I saw this image and I was like, perfect! So I edited it and drew it, redrew parts of it. And yeah. <laughs> That's entirely just for a thumbnail for my fanfic. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot these Pokemon drawings. I forgot about this. I came up with like this cute little Machop story where Machop finds a baby and brings it. And, like these two dads, like one's an announcement. He's got a Pikachu named Yoko. This girl and her Machop, her name is Yoko. I mean, yeah, the girl's name is Yoko. The Pikachu's name, I can't remember what did I call the Pikachu. And then the dad who's a cop with his, uh, uh, Something kitty? Uh, the, the cat Pokemon, okay? He's got, like, they have two things. Like, this dad, 
he, he only has the one, which is Pikachu. This guy has a few, and they're all kind of like cat things, and then this girl and her Machop. And it's kind of like, almost like the Meowth kind of thing, where it kind of learns to speak English over time, which is weird, but I still like it. And like, this Machop and this girl are like really close, and they're just like family together. He never, like, I don't think I ever got him to evolve in this storyline. I kind of wrote up. I never got far with it. Because, again, I'm terrible. And yeah, this room's kind of over. So thank you guys so very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you liked my weird, weird little stream about where I talked about giving up on projects. And writing. And drawing. And uh, characters. <laughs> and yay! <laughs> yay! I'm done. Anyways, thank you guys so very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you again. In my next stream, if you want to see more of my streams, subscribe to me here on Twitch. You can also watch all my backlog of streams over on my YouTube channel. All on Name Sherry Reaper. You can check out my fan fictions, as I mentioned, on AO3 and fanfiction.net. Uh, you can also check out all my art and all that kind of stuff on Instagram, Twitter, DeviantArt, all of it on Name Sherry Reaper, and also on Tumblr. And I post other things on Tumblr, because it's Tumblr. I've been on there for years. I ain't leaving! <laughs> um, and... I also post stream highlights and occasional kitty videos on my TikTok, which I keep forgetting I have. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Oh, yeah, and my coffee page. If you want to help support me and everything I do here on the internet, go check out my coffee page. Coffee.com slash Azure Reaper. I'm currently using those funds to save up for a desktop computer with good mic and all that good jazz. I'm not good at this. Anyways, thank you guys, and see you in my next stream. Bye bye
kitty is laying with me. Her feet on my belly, her belly stretched out in her floof, 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 and her sleepy little face. I have a kitty loving with me.